BCTV's Roland Boyden here. Welcome to an impromptu edition of 545 Live, broadcasting live from the second floor select board meeting room in the very 230 Main Street Municipal Center that BCTV shares with the town of Brattleboro town offices. As we get ready to do some lighting renovations in our third floor studios, we'll be looking for other places around the area and the community to film a broadcasts for shows like this here, 545 Live. We've still got 15 minutes full of headline news, upcoming area events, uh, BCTV happenings and programming, and Plenty more on deck for this here 545 Live broadcast. We'll uh, show you some footage from Archer Mayer's very cool Google Hangout Book Club event at the Brooks Memorial Library this week. We'll check in with the uh, proposed AT&T cell tower in Putney with uh, this week's special meeting on that event. Plus, Wyndham District 4 Rep Mike Merwicki is standing by live at the State House with Brattleboro Wyndham 2-2 Rep Molly Burke for a special uh, webcast report on what's going on in this here 2014 legislative session that's all on the way. So if you get the time and the attention span stick with us we're right here on 545 live to this January 31st, 2014 edition of 545 Live. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden, broadcasting live from the Select Board Meeting Room. That's footage of the Women's Freedom Center fundraiser event this past weekend, dubbed Goddess Rising, a belly dance fundraiser event. You can catch more of that footage on YouTube.com. We'll post the links online or show them below on the screen if you're watching on Comcast Cable. All right, uh, time to move on here, and we'll start by uh, launching into our latest feature. This is checking in with the Brattleboro Reformer and their Tout.com channel, where uh, reformer reporters and photographers can upload short video clips uh, from the field as they report on the go. That's where we're going to start by checking in and talk about a hot topic, uh, the latest telecommunications and broadband reports here in Brattleboro. Now, uh, Chris Campbell, executive director of the Vermont Telecommunications Authority, was uh, at an event in Newfane to discuss uh, the VTA cell and broadband forum news there. Let's take a look. It doesn't mean that we don't care about the people who don't have service yet, you know, in places like Townsend. Not at all. We care quite a bit about it. It's just a question of trying to um, target, you know, relatively limited resources to the places that, you know, don't have any kind of solution um, identified or available yet. D. Chris Campbell was featured in the Commons News article entitled Swimming Upstream from Commons News Editor Randy Holhut this week as well as we launch into our Commons News report and head into the split screen here for the official version. We'll take a look at his article, Randy Holhut's article, that is, where he uh, spoke with Chris Campbell who said, quote, we're really swimming upstreams in terms of where the cell carrier's investment priorities have been. We can't change the population density in our area. We can't change the terrain. The only thing we can do is lower costs. For more on that article, you can find it at commonsnews.org or uh, pick up an actual newspaper. The hit newsstands uh, for free uh, and areas all around Brattleboro every Wednesday. But uh, Community-minded citizens can pick up a paid prescription as well and help support local media. You can find out all that information again at commonsnews.org. All right, we're going to move on now and, as promised, talk a little bit about Archer Mayer and his visit to Brattleboro. As on Wednesday night, the Brooks Memorial Library launched their virtual book club series with several other libraries joining via Google Hangout and featuring local mystery author Archer Mayer utilizing their new video conferencing equipment and fiber net high-speed internet connection. The library is able to connect with uh, a network of 14 other libraries throughout the state. Now, for over an hour on Wednesday, uh, Archer Mayer was able to field questions from uh, folks with any of the participating locations. Library Director Jerry Carboni hopes to see this equipment utilized for this type of series on a regular basis, but emphasized that uh, the teleconferencing equipment is also available to the public. It's our uh, first uh, video conference event, official video conference event emanating from Brooks Library. And we're hosting uh, mystery author Archer Mayer and broadcasting it on YouTube as well as to two other libraries with audiences 
who will be able to see Archer interact with him uh, throughout the evening. How can you make it compelling and interesting and whatnot? And then you actually begin to write it. In the near future, I'll be able to sit at home and I'll turn something on like this device, which I gather is called a camera, and I'll be able to communicate with as many people who want to communicate with me. And that would be fun. I like meeting people. I love answering questions. I love engaging. That's how I get some of my better ideas. In fact, the audience suggested to me. We'll be working with uh, other libraries in the state, the other nine libraries that have the uh, Google uh, video, video conferencing uh, equipment. And uh, we're hoping to maybe develop it into a uh, virtual book club. Next up, we'll take a look at footage from the Brattleboro Area Chamber of Commerce annual meeting gala as they handed out awards to hardworking individuals and organizations all around the Brattleboro area. A big night for the Latches as they celebrated 75 years for the hotel and theater, 10 years for the Latches Arts Project, and 25 years for current managing director Gail Nunziata. Generations of people can come and feel like they're connected to something. And if you feel strongly about the theater as we do, we really hope you'll get to the Glatches Theater in Brattleboro, Vermont. All right, from there, it's time to head north to Montpelier by a web stream and check in with Wyndham 4 District Rep Mike Merwicki, who is joined now by Wyndham 2-2 Brattleboro Rep Molly Burke. Uh, they're about to record a live webcast interview for the program Montpelier Connection, produced by Mike, where you can see full uh, 18 to half hour episodes of interviews with reps uh, about what's going on in the State House. Those are all at BrattleboroTV.org. But right now we've got a chance to ask them some live questions. So Mike, Molly, thanks for checking in with us. Uh, Molly, maybe we can start with you. Let's talk a little bit about transportation. You sit on the House Transportation Committee. Why is this uh, in particular so important to you in a, a rural area like Vermont? Well, uh, one of the main reasons I would say is that I have been concerned about climate change for a very long time. And the transportation sector has been a very hard place to cut greenhouse gas emissions. We live in a state that's mostly rural, dispersed populations. Uh, we, it's very hard. We do have good public transit throughout the state, but it, it just can't take care of all our transportation needs. So I am very interested in promoting bicycle, uh, for also for health reasons, bicycling, walking. How do we make it possible for people to get around in other ways? Catch full episodes of Montpelier Connection with Mike Marwicki, including this interview with Molly Burke. It'll start next week. Uh, two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10. All right, we're going to move on now and check in with the hardworking students of Landmark College's broadcast journalism class who've just finished their winter uh, three-week intensive J-term semester, uh, putting together the program Landmark Broadcasters here in BCTV's downtown studios. It's a full-fledged news program, and uh, we've been able to uh, co-opt some of their hard work in the journalism field for our uses here on 545 Live, including uh, one of their co-anchors, Chrissy Osgood, who uh, took a look at some of the things going on in Fukushima. Animals Cry for Mercy comes all the way from Fukushima, Japan. Mr. Yoshizawa is a resident of Fukushima and a well-known protester. He has returned to the evacuation zone to care for his cows and other surviving animals inside the zone. Yoshizawa is defying the government's kill order on the cows because he believes they are victims along the 83,000 people. After the nuclear plant explosion in 2011, dozens of farms were abandoned and radioactive cows left to die. Yoshizawa worries about his health as the radiation meter reads 1.5 times over safe levels. Town officials have turned a blind eye to the issue and deny having any knowledge of anyone living inside the evacuation zone. Next up, Vermont's lone house rep Peter Welsh may be fighting an uphill battle is getting House members in Washington to follow Vermont's lead in adopting changes to current patent law may be uh, slow going. It's an effort to protect small businesses and nonprofits from the predatory act of patent trolling, a form of extortion employed across the country with increasing frequency as scammers attempt to solicit money uh, from the victims by demanding an often exorbitant uh, out-of-court settlement to avoid a lawsuit over trumped-up patent infringement claims something current patent law complicates by often costing companies more to defend. Can you imagine what it's like for a small nonprofit doing good work to get a letter that is essentially a stick up? That's what it is. And what these businesses and nonprofits then have to decide is do they pay the bounty or do they fight? 
Next up, the Holstein Association's nationwide offices sit here in Brattleboro, just another way that uh, agriculture has put this region on the national stage. And uh, this week they hosted a forum that included comments from Lindsay Borden, who she's their new executive director of genetic services at the Holstein Association. She talked a little bit about their work. Holstein Association USA is taking a proactive approach to ensure we are the leading source for Holstein genetic and genomic information and services. Our new Holstein Genetic Services Department provides programs, products, services, technology, and leadership to enhance the genetics of the Holstein breed and provide valuable information to help Holstein breeders be more successful. For the most part, the Holstein Genetic Services Department is a new way to package the programs, products, and services which we have provided to the industry previously. Speaking of new programming on BCTV, there's another Brattleboro Core Arts public forum here in Brattleboro that's been posted this week. It'll show on BCTV right here on Channel 8 all this coming week. And you can also catch it uh, by going to brattleborotv.org. We've got a clip now as well, courtesy of hardworking volunteer uh, M. Richards. Let's take a look. Whether or not we've lived in a community for all our lives or we've lived in a community <coughs> for just a few months, we are all seeking a place we call home and we are all seeking a place where we can um, be in our families and with our friends and with the people we love. And to that, we bring community. Next up, we'll move to Putney, where another special meeting held this week continued to discuss the proposed AT&T cell tower, something that uh, area residents uh, looking for better broadband coverage say is necessary. But the aesthetic problem cell towers pose is something that still has some residents up in arms. Where are steps to, to address concerns dealing with aesthetics, sound, right? Um, and so um, I don't think there's a better site in Putney. It doesn't mean there isn't another site that might work, um, but a lot of things have to go right to even get where we are, and I know I've said that a couple times, right? But this is a good location. And as promised as well, we'll take a look at upcoming events in the form of our video calendar. It's also hosted by me. It shows as a web special uh, every Thursday. So let's take a look at that. This uh, time around, we're going to talk about the Vermont Theatre Company, an in-house event at BCTV, the highly anticipated collegiate a cappella concert at the Latches fundraiser for the Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center. And we'll take a look ahead to Gallery Walk as well. Uh, all that's on deck here. We've got spotlight video to back it up, but you can uh, shortcut here if you want to find out more and click any one of these links. And with that, uh, we'll launch into my official promo for each of these. First and foremost, there's been a lot of uh, the Vermont Theatre Company's play Nuts showing at the Hooker Dunham Theatre, and there's still a chance to catch it, but it runs out Sunday. That's right, Sunday is the last day for this epic run of the play. Uh, but there are performances uh, every day from the 30th, the 31st, and on into February the 1st and the 2nd matinees at 3 p.m., evening showings at 7.30 p.m. at the Hooker Dunham Theatre in Brattleboro. And before we head on out of here, we'll take a look at the highly anticipated uh, Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center fundraiser performance at the Latches Theatre, the 11th annual collegiate a cappella concert. Starts at 7.30 p.m. at the Latches this Saturday, the 1st of February. Doors open at 7. There's no escaping the jaws of the end in this town. It's great to have you here for Brattleboro's 10th annual collegiate a cappella concert. I think this is bigger than the Super Bowl in Brattleboro. <laughs> it for another edition of 545 Live on a special impromptu broadcast from the select board meeting room here in 230 Main Street. We'll be back in our downtown studios, newly rigged with lighting equipment next week, so be sure to check in with that. In the meantime, thanks for watching. We'll all have to live with my uh, evolving <laughs> discombobulation here because I have people here and people there and people there and I will try to address you all, but it will look like I'm drunk. I'm not. Not tonight, at least. So.